Okay, say hello to the most minimal keyboard that I have yet. Yes, more minimal than the Ergo Docs or than my XD75. Um, so right now I do have the nice nanos in them. And that's because what if you watch my stream that I unlisted and then relisted public, I had a, if I can get it in here, a slight mishap while pulling the Pro Micro Controller out at first. I mean, I've already got the firmware flashed on it, and I've got it marked. It's just, I pulled it out incorrectly, and I corrected that, like, very soon after, so the other one is actually in, the pins are in good condition. I do have pins on the way otherwise, so I should be able to get that back up in somewhat good order. Yeah, they are like ski wampus, so I should be able to replace the pins on that one and get QMK working on it. So for those that don't know, Nice Nanos run on a different firmware called ZMK than QMK. It has a few different functionalities to it, but yeah. So first thing about the keyboard, the Ferris Sweep. Um, it's based on the Ferris lineup of keyboards, and it's got a couple features to it that basically along the same lines as the standard Ferris, except it uses a microcontroller, so it's easier to put together, which is why... I did it in the first place. So JLC PCB was kind of the company I went through to print off the PCBs for it. And so, yeah, it does support a tenting puck. So you can connect it to like any standard tripod or, and they sell the tripods with it. I thought about getting the pucks and tripods, but I opted not to for now but it's still an option I can take advantage of because I didn't put the rubber feet over it. Oh, and then the switches in it are the clicky robins. So they click a lot. And so when I was messing with it, I did do customize the PCBs with different art than the, what the standard Ferris has. So you can see that... I have that in there, and if you paid attention on the stream, I did kind of sand down the sides there, so it's a bit smoother. Um, but the cool thing is, because of the way JLC PCB does it, I still have extra PCBs. So I'm looking at a way to give them away in... So... Um, I will try and figure that out or game plan that otherwise. But And then I've got like the little JST jacks that I bought. And I soldered those directly to the nice nanos because I don't want these hanging out all the time when I'm not using them with the oh, Pro Micros. So I don't have the batteries connected up. I never got the... Battery is completely done. I have to find something to cover it up so that the two sides don't make contact so I don't, like, kill the battery right away. But other than that, it does work just fine wired up. So, you know, all you do is you wire it up. And then because of the way that it's been programmed for the Ferris sweep, um, it's the left side that's basically the master side, and then, yeah, the other side otherwise. And that's the main one for when you're gaming. So when you plug it in, you'll plug it in here, and it uses USB-C. The Pro Micros I got are USB-C as well. So that'll be pretty nice. Okay, so the video cut, the camera footage kind of cut short because I ran out of space on my SD card and my phone, but that's okay. Oh, basically I'm to the point to where I want to show you my config for this anyway. So this is what the ZMK config looks like. So if you go and check the ZMK docs, it actually has a pretty simple way of 
allowing you to edit and get your firmware without you really having to set up a build environment. So yeah, I did change a couple things. I did add layer defines so that I could switch those around as I need to and add more or take away. And so I'm not always having to go in here and take out portions of it. So um, I haven't really used the combos much. Well, haven't thought about it. Uh, that may be a consideration down the road. The other thing too, so I do have like tap dance oh, settings. That's what these are, is the GL0 and so on. Is there my various gaming layer oh, tap dance stuff? One to transition into it and otherwise. So we'll kind of sweep through that. So because my keycaps are not marked, I decided to make QWERTY the default layer. So you always have QWERTY basically open at all times. So if I go and I can type from, come on. I can, so the pinky stagger is a little bit more aggressive than I'm used to. And so it, it took me a couple seconds to adjust to that, but I can then go and type like this and be fine. And it's actually kind of, it's very, very clicky. So I haven't added any like Omro stuff to it just yet. So I did have to flip things around because I'll cover that actually right here. So the way I configured it is a bit different than my ergo docs because my thumbs basically sit on these oh more inner oh keys rather than on the outside keys. I moved oh let me change that. I moved space to be on that outer key and so I have to reach in instead to hit oh enter and go to the next line and then it's also if I hold that key it'll go to a different layer which is by default the right layer so it has a bunch of the symbols on the right side and then it's also got arrow keys so by default the arrow keys are like right in here and so I moved them actually and kind of configured the same way in a Vim layout. So I actually moved them up to the home row where they would be in an actual Vim layout. And so I can, because in my Vim config, I haven't like disabled arrow keys. I can still take advantage of those for movement in Vim. So I'm basically not lost. So I can sit here, hold it, and I can go... So it's not, this one is supposed to be up, but it is down, apparently. But everything else should work just fine, as expected. So I, I've still got my ergo docs in front of me, so I can still climb and go up and all. So my next layer is the QWERTY layer, but we'll come back to that in a second. So we've basically got all the standard ones. So on the bottom corner over here, on the bottom row of the pinky is the left shift, which might be a little bit more aggressive than I want it to be, but we'll work that out. And it's the same thing on the right pinky with the left shift again under Z. So yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Oh, and if I hold down the key, the inner key, that is space, I hold it, it basically becomes a super key, and then it does its thing. I have no escape on this layer at all, which is kind of a bad thing, I guess, in this case. So I there's, there's still kinks that I'm working out. You're working with like 34 keys, but there's a lot of functionality that I can add. So on this not home key um, next to backspace, because again, the inner key is backspace, so I have access to backspace easily. 
I've got this tap la dance layer, which transitions to the, well, if I hold it, actually, I skipped it. If I hold it, it becomes a left shift. And then if I, well, one tap, one tap or a single hold is a left shift. If I double tap it, it switches to QWERTY. And if I triple tap it, it switches to the gaming layer. So the gaming layer actually works okay-ish. I've only played Ion Fury with it so far, and that was for like five minutes, but it's really not all that bad. So before we kind of go down to there, probably a good transition is into the gaming layer anyway, since we're here now. Um, so I do have a few keys that I've set up for, oh, the gaming layer. And so I've got one key that basically I go one, two, and three on the taps for tap dance, and that does the number one, two, or three on the um, number row, respectively. And that, I believe, I set down to the bottom left pinky, the bottom row on the left pinky. Um, the game layer one is my tab, escape, and F1 key. There are some quirks that I noticed with it with the time it takes to activate. So I still have to kind of work that out and dig through the ZMK documentation for gaming specifically because the way that tap dance works is if you press another key before you complete your tap dance, it will go with the last accumulated one. So if I am going for a triple tap, but I press another key in between, oh taps two and three it'll run the second tap rather than the third tap so that's something that i have to kind of work out the next one would be and this one kind of gave me a little bit of trouble when i was working messing with it is i've got another one that is left control left shift and then left alt and that's basically right on the home row with the pinky so i'm not reaching for the control and shift so the way ZMK does, oh, tap dancing, is if you basically press and hold it once, so like one tap, just, it'll fire the first one and hold it. If you basically tap, then tap and hold again, basically a two tap, so a tap, then a hold. So a hold is like the first one. A tap hold would be the second one and a tap tap hold would be the third one so it basically counts off the number and whatever no what number whichever number you come up with in the end is the one that it will hold so if i end up pressing it down three times it's going to hold that left alt if i press it twice it's going to hold down that left shift and if i only just hold it it'll do the left control so and then yeah the number row so this is what the gaming layer looks like. I've got those tap dance keys down the side of that first column. And then I basically moved over all the um, core keys over one so that I can just center it, my hand, like I do on my ErgoDox layer. And then space is on that home key where it's easy to access. And then I kept that, oh, GL0 tap dance key the same so that I could s transition between the two of them. And then I put left and right arrow keys on the other side, and then I basically did a number pad layout for, like, numbers one through nine. If I need, if I, it's not critical that I have quick access to it, but normally I need, you need quick access to those, like, top three. So that makes it nice. So something like Halo, where you're tapping one to switch your main weapon, then tapping two to switch your oh, grenades it's just a single tap or a double tap to do that and then i added some extra keys otherwise for like certain like marwind skyrim things that way so rtj for that kind of a thing return for activating items because some of the older games that i have it uses um enter or return for that activation and then m for a quick med pack and then a pause key so every other layer is basically the standard like default layer that it came with that I told it to give it. 
So you've got your volume control and then your mute, and then it's got a lined with transparent keys all around and then page up and down on the right hand side. Then you've got a home row of F keys plus F6 and F7 down on the row below and then numbers one through five on the top row. These keys here are basically Bluetooth control. So you can clear all your Bluetooth connections and you can have up to like five Bluetooth connections on the nice nanos that it remembers. And so you can go to the next device or the previous device with this layer. The next one is the right layer, which I basically talked about already and showed that I'd completely messed up. So I had to add these layer o oh, diagrams manually so that I could see what each one was doing or supposed to do. And so you can see that the whole number row of symbols is added in there. And then on the left layer, they just use the numbers default. So you've got the equals and the brackets and so on on the one side, and then you've got your hashes and everything else on the other. And then here's a QWERTY layer. It's kind of your standard one. It's got the left shift on the bottom pinky rows. And then it, I set these so that they're transparent because backspace is going to be here anyway, and the GL0 I want to keep there. I haven't moved the space around or mess with that but it's a standard space key there and then a momentary right oh yeah it's a momentary right layer hold is what that is so yeah and so this key right here what i had it do is if i just press the return key it'll enter if i hold it then it'll go to the right layer so i can go if i go back to which one? That was the right, right? Yeah. Right is that one. So I go back and I hold it. And I'm getting the arrow keys like that. I think I demonstrated this already, actually. So, yeah. Like I said, the gaming layer actually works okay. So if I... So there's the gaming layer. And so I can double tap and go into QWERTY. So I set it to basically toggle because what ZMK does is it checks the state status of the layer that you want to activate when you toggle it. And if it does basically the opposite of this current state it's in. So yeah. That's the layer, that's how it works. Um, this is basically like the first day, probably I'd say almost 48 hours with it. Um, first impressions basically, cause I barely put it together. But yeah, I've still got to work with it a little bit more. I kind of want, once I get the new pins in from DigiKey, I will mess around with QMK a bit more, which let me, Let me actually, <laughs> that one is supposed to be up. So yeah. Um, and so actually the process to send it back up is actually pretty simple. And when you use the script that Z the ZMK documentation tells you to use, it creates a GitHub repo with actions that will auto-compile the firmware for you on GitHub. So all you do is you go git add u, and that'll add all the oh, stuff that you updated, which will pretty much be one. Git commit fix up key. And then you go git push get pushed on. So if we look at ZMK config, and then we go into the actions tab here, it'll show that it's actually building the firmware for it. So it'll take a couple minutes to do that. And then that's your Q 
ZMK firmware, and then you just flash it. The, oh, it tells you how to do it for, like, the nice nanos. There are videos on it. You basically, like, hit reset twice to send it into, oh, what? The mode that makes it show up as a mass storage device, you copy, copy the proper UF2 folder or file over from the firmware zip, and then it'll auto flash it once it copies it over and it'll reset the keyboard half. And then you just do that with both sides and then yeah. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, while it's working on that, so let me go back to my projects. My Xorg crashed on me, so bear with me. So if we go into sweep key maps, so I've put together my key map. This is my fork of QMK. And so we can just take a quick perusal through here. I've kind of, I haven't added like all the layouts here, but I've started to like do it. And I think I know what I want to move over from what I've done so far with, oh, the other one. So I do have to switch some things out when I was messing with ZMK. I'm like, I might have to actually switch my home thumb around so it's not exactly like the Ergo Docs. And so I did that. And so I haven't had time to mess around with the tap dance stuff that I programmed in for the firmware. But hopefully I get a chance to do that here. So you can see I've got all my layers planned out. And I still have to add the layer thing. I've, again, Dvorak is default, QWERTY next. Then gaming, then I've got a mouse layer that I left in that was the default one. And then a nav layer. Then here's the quote layer that has a bunch of symbols. Parentheses layer that has parentheses and brackets. And then this one was a function key layer. And then I think that was more symbols. And then even more symbols with GUI stuff and, oh... A reset key so yeah that's the state of the layout that is what that looks like and so now all we do here for back to zmk is we download the firmware we go into our file manager of choice i'm picking the graphical one in this case because i'm not trying to think about having which one I'm going to open with. I kind of shift it over so that I'm not like dragging across the pane because like PC Man FM hates you dragging stuff across the pane from other programs and it's just reacts really weirdly. So what I do is I plug in a, one keyboard half. So in this case, I'm plugging, actually let's start with the right hand side because that's the what they term the peripheral side. So I've got a paper clip here, and all I do is I short out the reset and the ground pins on the microcontroller a couple times, and it shows up as the nice nano. So you do that basically two times kind of quickly, and then literally all you do is you go in, and this is our right-hand side. And so it resets the board. You unplug that half of the board. Plug the other half in. Did I get it right this time? I have issues sometimes shorting it out properly. Come on. There we go. So there is a light underneath it. It's just kind of hard to see somewhat. And that can give you an idea of like whether you've reset it properly or not. But yeah, it'll basically reset the board and close it out automatically without you thinking about it. And then you can just connect up your two halves again. And then plug in your left-hand side. And then we should be good to go -y. We can hold that one. 
and I, I I fixed my key. You can see it moves ever so slightly, and I'm pressing the arrow keys now. So yeah, that's also how you fix it. It's pretty decently easy. I mean, it's not the quickest, because if you build the environment directly on your... Set up the environment on your computer, you can just flash it right away and compile it right away. But yeah, you're relying on GitHub servers to do it for you if you're doing it the standard way. So if you don't mind that, then yeah, that's okay. And then these key this keyboard is super pocketable. So it's super portable and you can take it with you. So if you set up your gaming keyboard, a gaming layer on it, you can have your like mega gaming layout with you everywhere you go. So one final thing to add, um, the color scheme. I wish the green would have turned out more like this on these greens, but they're okay-ish. I can like buy another set and otherwise, because I was going for a camo color scheme. But yeah, that's the other, that's one thing. Um, I will add, it was pretty funny to open the box for the keycaps and switches and be greeted by that. I ordered the keycaps, the switches, and what? Yeah, the keycaps and the switches, basically, from a company called MK Ultra. So, makes sense. It's not every day you get to see a report from a parent's cousin. But, you know, that's okay. And, oh, the Pro Micros, I... So, the microcontrollers, both Nice Nanos and the Pro Micros, and the TRS cable, I bought from, oh, Keyhive, which is a Utah-based company. So, you know, I was buying local, supporting that local business bit. And then the JST jacks I got, basically, on Amazon. But, yeah. Um, yeah, um... I should have gone over the configuration already, so you should know that by this point. So, yeah, no sound test. That's the closest you get, I think. Of course, the layer's always in flux, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.